are gonna get crazy! <laughs> Most everyone's mad. <laughs> Oh, hey. Sorry, I had my mic off. <laughs> yeah, but like I, I would say that uh, I, I could use like the podcast link, but at the same time, like uh, like my like my internet can my internet can sometimes be a bit uh, can be a bit slow. But then again, it's not always. And like I like I I just think the stream might might end up uh, messing messing with my uh, mic quality and stuff. But I can I can try it anyways to see what it's like. All right. Well, uh, we'll we'll try that out right now because uh, we are officially getting this one started. Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. How are you all doing today? And what you have heard is actually the voice of my special guest. Uh, it's not it's not all the time that we actually do have uh, a special guest star that actually does work in the industry. Uh, but this one right over here, he has actually worked uh, or starting to work in the big leagues, uh, starting to get into the industry, and we will be talking more about that. So please welcome to Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast animator Jerry McRory. Jerry, what's up? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem. No problem. And I just got to say, your timing is is impeccable by the way because it was just when i would start like my segment then you just came in wanting the link do you still want it by the way um yeah like you can you can get me it anyway i'll i'll see how i'll see how it goes yeah uh all right so let me just go and do that quickly just provide you with the link just so you could see uh the chat wall so uh you'll see everybody will go and say hi to you so there you go. Just to give you that All right, right over oh, there. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, we definitely have a lot to go and talk about, uh, not only with what you have worked on recently, but also just a, a few uh, news that did occur, some of which are actually last minute. So, uh, Jerry, I would like to go and ask you, are you ready for today's episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast? Absolutely. All right, chat wall. Are you ready for today's episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast? Let me hear it now. Uh, let's see. Yes. All right. We're seeing people that are ready. That is great to hear. So with all that said and done, I believe now it is time that we shall go and get things started. And what we are going to begin by talking about, of course, will be with uh, Jerry's little project that he has worked on. Like I said, he is an animator, uh, but you might have actually seen this uh, project that he has actually worked on. Because if you guys don't know, Jerry is an animator on Space Jam A New Legacy. So uh, just to start things off, uh, Jerry, can you tell us um, what did you do on uh, Space Jam A New Legacy? Well, actually, it turns out I was actually a scene planner on the film. A scene uh, like planner. I helped out with the I helped out with the ink and paint process, like uh, building the files for the ink and paint artist to to, to fill in the colors for. I also uh, prepared prepared animation I prepared animation scenes as well for the compositing stage, and I also uh, like brought like uh, worked with a team of ten. Uh, 10 plus to basically ex to get the animation scenes like through the online uh, pipeline getting to getting like getting a lot of scenes to the, like the animators to the cleanup artists to the ink and paint artists to the compositors and it was a real pleasure as well to be working with a lot of recognizable names as well like uh uh like john pomeroy he worked on space jam and legacy as well uh, as as an animator for for a couple of couple of very couple of key sequences on the film nice but, uh, like a, like, yeah i wouldn't want to spoil it of course but like but then again you can probably look it up anyone on his instagram he does have some some uh scenes like he posted on his instagram 
Um, well, considering that it, it's already been a little while since Space Jam A New Legacy has been released, I'm just going to go and say right now, um, there will be a little bit of spoilers from the movie, so if you don't want to hear it, you can always mute it or uh, skip ahead so you don't have to hear what the spoilers are in case you want to go and avoid that. But um, if you can, uh, can you tell us a little bit about those scenes that uh, uh, John Pomeroy has worked on, or more specifically, what did you work on? Well, it turns out I like the two scenes that I that I contributed the most to in the in the scene planning uh, department was actually the DC World sequence and the Wonder Woman sequence with you know with Lola Bunny like testing her skills out in the in the big stadium. Ah, and, yes. Like, well, and also like on the DC World sequence where Daffy Duck uh, Daffy Duck is pretending to be Superman and you know orchestrates like the. Uh, like the runaway train just so he can like you know act out being a hero and stuff so so he can get into the justice league but then bugs bunny and lebron then come in to uh, like to ask him uh, if he'd be interested in uh coming on to the team to help to help lebron like play the game of basketball to get his son back from algae rhythm nice nice uh do you know which uh like which part specifically that you actually took on the most uh that you actually helped out with or is it just those scenes in particular well there was actually quite more um like there was quite more like uh there was the like there was the final the very final scene uh final shot in the film with lebron and boggs kind of walking walking and walking to the distance and like this was a scene like boggs bunny in this particular part was animated by the ex disney animator sean keller who worked on films like Atlantis the Lost Empire and Home on the Range. And like him, like I've always found his animation to be very, very unique. Like the way the way the characters moved was very a little more limited, but like very but very impressive at the same time. I always found it very I always found it very intriguing. And like and like I was able to help out with the the like uh, setting up the the animation for the ink and paint stage where I I basically made all the invisible color regions for the uh, like for the ink and paint artist to to work with to basically put in the colors on, on Bugs Bunny with ease and then also like I uh, also helped out to prepare the prepare the the scene as well for the lighting and shading stage where where the tones and shadow artists would basically put in the tones and shadows for Bugs Bunny well, as he as he walks and walks to the distance with LeBron and you know but and then the movie would end. Okay and. Um... Also, I am curious to know, considering uh, like from what we chatted before, you didn't specifically work at Warner Brothers Animation. Uh, you worked in a studio in Toronto uh, on this movie. Can you tell us about the place where you worked at? Yes, it's a, it's a brand new studio that just that just recently got set up by uh, by the Deluxe Entertainment Service Group called Company Three Animation. Uh, they're, they're a new studio that just uh, that just worked with Warner Brothers before on the Green Eggs and Ham series for Netflix, and they they worked with they worked with the big uh, they worked with the studio again on the Space Jam: New Legacy, doing uh, doing a couple of key sequences uh, in the film with uh, with another studio in Montreal called Tonic DNA. Oh, okay. I need to look up actually, considering that's not uh, that's not far from my neck of the woods. mm Hmm. Yeah, like yeah, their their stuff is very very cool, and like uh, Company Three Animation, like the studio I worked for, they like, they have a lot of very neat neat projects in the pipeline and everything. So like, there's a, there's a lot to look forward to, like uh, on the uh, on their end. All right, that does sound nice. That do, like I know like because of like c contract reasons, we can't really talk about those. So um, of course, yeah, absolutely. But um, what I would like to know is that considering you did mention that this is your first time working on a major motion picture like Space Jam A New Legacy, uh, what I would like to know is, uh, from your perspective, how was your experience working on this movie or your first experience working on a feature film like Space Jam A New Legacy? Well, it was very, very neat. It was, it was a lot of fun and it was very, very insightful. I was actually working on the film from my own from my own bedroom right uh, where where I am right now of course. <laughs> I was actually uh, I was using the Lenovo computer like when to to do my work and I was uh 
I was working with a, a virtual server software, VMware, to get access to one of the computers in Toronto, like virtually. So I'd be working with a computer like that'd be a lot more powerful than the one I had. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah VMware workstation. So like you never actually worked in the studio. You worked purely at home on Space Jam and New Legacy. Yes, that's right. I'm like an, uh, and for like anybody who doesn't know, I'm actually from Ireland. I think we could tell a little bit from the accent, you know, not, not yeah, to say sure, that your accent course. is back, but it, it's not that your accent is bad. It's just like we can hear it's like, yeah, you're you're from uh, somewhere in Europe. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Of course. Like, yeah, but I'm just I'm just put, throwing that out there right now. Just so nobody just so anybody uh, just so any, just for anybody. Uh, just if anyone's curious. No, no, that no, we definitely do understand, but um but right now you're actually in Toronto. Uh Jerry, are you still there? Sorry, you're cutting off there. Like Yeah, uh, just to repeat. So, okay. right, like even though you're from Ireland, right now you're in Toronto? No, I'm I'm I'm, I'm still living here in Ireland, of course. Like uh, uh. I was actually I was working uh, like remotely as a freelancer. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Now, now, now I understand. I understand completely. But then again, like lucky you that you do, man, you, you managed to work at home on a major project like Space Jam. I don't think um, that is something you would expect in your life to actually do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And like, and like I, I was actually sort of like, I did apply for like an end artist job, like on the project. And then one of the recruiters at company three animation, well, they were called deluxe animation before the, before May, before I left the, before I left the project, but just, just a week before they were completed on the project. Uh, the, one of the recruiters uh, reached out to me to recommend the scene planner job because I had experience working on, uh, working with Tim Boom Harmony's uh, Node and Camera Tool. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, especially nowadays, um, if you really want to get into the industry, you you would need to know softwares like Toon Boom, especially considering that nowadays it's it, it, like Toon Boom. Would you say like is the top of the line animation software nowadays? Yeah, it would be the top of the line for the for the mainstream animation industry, like especially even in Canada, where where it comes from. Yeah, that's yeah, that is true. Yeah, like I, I know, like I, I believe Toon Boom was actually made in Montreal. So we know around here, that's what we would primarily use. And I know there are other major studios that would also heavily use it, like even Disney would actually use uh, Toon Boom as well. So at least like since you do know how to use Toon Boom, then like it, it it does come in handy. Like probably one good advice you could actually give out to uh, to the people watching and listening to this is uh, use Toon Boom if you want to get in the industry. Well, look, you, can, you don't have don't have to just use Toon Boom. There's uh, there's also other so there's another software that's that's very big in Europe where uh, in Europe where I'm from. Uh, TV Paint. Oh, of course, of software. course, yeah. <laughs> Another software that you can use as a, as an alternative, but then like there's a, like then Tunum Harmony is also in like the second as also another industry standard as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is true. I do apologize. So yeah, TV Paint and Toon Boom are are a couple of the essentials to know how like to to use animation even like in the industry standards. To like, you know, once you have that knowledge, it'll be easier to actually get into the industry. Mm hmm. All right. That's cool. But um, now we want to talk about something that did actually recently happen with Space Jam and New Legacy. I'm sure you probably heard about all of this It's actually regarding the recent controversy with the credits. Um, I've talked about this last week. You probably have heard about character designer Dave Alvarez and yes. um and what happened to him where he supplied a lot of the character designs, including some that did end up in the movie itself. But unfortunately, he did not receive the credits where uh, by that point we would see 
uh, the like a lot of hashtags that would be trending uh, for a while, including uh, hashtag credit Dave and hashtag cre uh, credit Dave Alvarez. Now, there was at one point on social media where the cartoon community also caught attention to a comment that you made on a video where you mentioned that not only you worked on Space Jam A New Legacy, but you did not receive credits as well. So what I would like to know. So what I would like to know from your perspective um, how do you feel about the whole controversy with Dave Alvarez not getting credits? And how do you feel about you as well not receiving credits in Space Jam A New Legacy? Well, actually, it turns out that like I'm not the only one at Company 3 Animation who, who didn't get who didn't get credit in the film uh, in the scrolling end credits. There was also like uh, a few more people who worked at Company 3 Animation who weren't uh, credited in the film either. Uh, did any was, yeah did anyone at company three actually get credits yes there, there was act there was like uh over over half of the people did get credit including uh some of my some of my teammates on the film um uh, megan grayson bobby c mangal thomas van campen also um evan saunders claire morris and like yeah those like those people uh and jennifer chu uh like those ones i uh, i did work with uh like primarily on the project and then there's also another uh like another rookie animator as well called john densk who worked with tom bancroft uh, a, a lot of times and he wasn't he wasn't credit there either mm -hmm. so how but uh, how do you feel about uh, not receiving those credits? Do you feel like do you feel like you got cheated over? Um, are you OK with this? Uh, and considering how there are plenty of others, including some of your teammates and with uh, people like Dave Alvarez, uh, what are your thoughts and what are your feelings about uh, not receiving those credits? At first, when I, when I watched the movie with my family at the end credit, uh, when we were watching the end credits at the very end, when I saw the movie with my family at the at my local cinema, uh, like I was really hoping to see my name on the credits. But then again, that there was a there was kind of a part of me who was kind of like, don't get your hopes up because something could happen. Like anything could happen, you know. Like so you, your name might not show up there. And then when like when when we we're look when I was looking for my name scrolling on those credits, like. It was kind of hard because like uh, so there was uh, everyone was so close to it was all uh, bundled in together, and then like we kind of taped it over and and then like I was looking over like to see if my name was there and unfortunately my name was not there and at first I was at first at first I felt very upset but then like oh but then over time I felt you know what like like at the same time like. I like it's 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 not the it's not the worst thing honestly like like at least because there's always more chances to get your name out there and even like I'm already promoting the fact that I worked on the film on my social media I'm showing all the proof in the world that even and even Company Three Animation like they they, they did post the full credits uh, of, of all the people who worked with them on the film uh, on their Instagram and on their and like yeah on LinkedIn as well our, like our names are all listed there. Mm hmm. Actually, yeah, um, actually, I do have one proof that you did work on it that you sent me. Uh, do you mind if I show that uh, to the audience? Yeah, you can go on ahead. Yeah, because uh, you just showed this to me and it's actually really awesome. And apparently from what you said, it's um, right at the end, like when you finished, uh, like you were almost done or it was soon to be released. But it's actually this drawing here of um your uh acro ace avatar acro ace but no not acro sorry andro 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 ace, ace bunny yes uh your yeah your uh your bunny oc andro ace bunny with bugs and lola uh that was done by john pomeroy and it's actually a really uh -huh. nice one yeah and i'm very proud of it i'm very proud of it as well and uh, also like it turned like my rabbits, my Zootopia style rabbits uh, name is like is actually named after me, Jerry. I just you know, it's just it's just my own like uh, anthropomorphic animal representation of myself. You see, <laughs> no, it, it, it's really nice. It, it it's a really cool one, and especially coming from uh John, from a, a really well known animator like John Pomeroy. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of feel there's a part of me that is kind of jealous that holy crap, you got like you actually got a drawing not just from John Pomeroy, but 
with two very popular characters with Bugs and Lola and the character you created. That is like that is something that you got to keep like near and dear to your heart. Absolutely. <laughs> of, t- of course. Yeah, so I do have one more question that I would like to go and ask you. Uh, considering everything that has happened with the whole controversy with uh, the credits and stuff like that, including yourself and what you went through throughout the production, um, the big question I want to ask you is, would you want to go and do this again? Would you be willing to go through this entire experience of what you did with Space Jam and New Legacy again, even if it would mean that maybe you would not receive uh, credits? I would absolutely. I would honestly, because it was a it, like I would definitely be open to doing this kind of work more often. All right. So that, yeah, that, I mean, like the, the whole, like at the end of the day, it really is all about the experience itself. Mm-hmm. And there's a few, a few people as well, like uh, on LinkedIn, whom I'm connected with, who would honestly agree. Whom like this, uh, like this one uh, person whom I've known for quite some time, um, an assistant animator named Denise Dean. She, uh, she's based in England and she, she worked on films like Balto and uh, Wolfwalkers as well. Ooh. She, uh, like, yeah, like, and she, she was basically saying the, sort of the same thing. How, like, uh, at the at the end of the day, like, uh, like the credits is not as important as your personal experience on the movie itself. At the end of the day, and like, like the work that you've done for the film as well is just like, like you, like you being able to show it on your portfolio, like it's just it's just as important. Like, uh, like to show off to the employers to 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 see like to give them confidence to be able to hire you, and to trust to to have trust in your uh, skill set and everything. Oh yeah, no, I I understand where you are going with it. Really, so basically, it, it it's to go and show off your skills to really hone your craft and to be better at what you do, including the fact that now, like, even though you don't got the credits there, you still got something to work on with your portfolio that looks absolutely beautiful. And I I could definitely tell that because you were attached to a big project like Space Jam A New Legacy, I I, I got the confidence that your future in animation is going to be bright. Like, it's it's actually going to go up from there. Yeah, and also, like, I, can I, I can also say this as well, like, I actually got another job very recently, uh, back uh, last month. I worked with Titmouse in Van- uh, like in Vancouver again from my own home in Ireland. But I worked with Titmouse as a scene setup artist uh, via Adobe Animate on this one project that Titmouse is doing for Warner Brothers. I can't really I can't really discuss it really because it's 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 not it has yet to be announced. But like that like that that is one that is one thing I can I can definitely say. So that's. So that's a, that's another sign right there. That's like you're right. That my my future in the industry will will, will be very bright. That is awesome. I gotta say, and also just uh, overall though, I just gotta say congratulations with um, what you have done on Space Jam and New Legacy. And already it looks like uh, things are going up from there, especially with that project you're working at Tip Mouse. So uh, can't wait to hear what the announcement is gonna be on that. Indeed. Yeah, and uh, now it is time I want to go and pass on to the chat wall, and I would like to ask you all if you have any questions for Jerry regarding um, his experience on Space Jam or any additional questions uh, that you may have, let me know if you got any that you would like to ask him. So if there are any questions, ask away. Uh, let's see. Just got to wait a little bit. Um, let's see if someone uh, someone asks. Well, have you ever been an animator at Cartoon Saloon before? Yeah, I don't. Well, actually. Actually, go I did on. I actually work on. OK, OK, I'm sorry. I did actually participate in an open day in uh, at Cartoon Saloon in 2019 when they were making the movie Wolfwalkers. Oh, and, uh, like I, I was given like a bit of a lecture on how they do clean up and ink and paint on the movie, and getting uh, getting a feel for the you know the like the brush like the new brushes that they made for the clean up stage, where like it would be it would dist- where they would distinguish from like the town the town like yeah from the town and the forest where 
the town would have like a like kind of the kind of blocky sort of sort of lines, while rough blo- blocky lines, while the forest would have like the like the like more live uh, more uh, vibrant uh, sketchy Xerox like lines. Yes, that and, is like, true. It was, very it was very intriguing. I must say, like oh my god, <laughs> it was a lot. Of, it was a lot of fun back then. Like oh, when I was there down in Kilkenny in 2019 in the summertime. I'll, like, I'll never forget it. Oh, that that is nice. And honestly, I w- I'm quite surprised to actually hear that. That is actually really awesome. And the fact that you even got like a little bit of that taste of Wolfwalkers before it came out, that that must that must be a beautiful experience. I mean, I love Wolfwalkers, by the way. So the fact Me that too. yeah, the fact that you even got a little bit of that experience is just amazing. Uh, moving on, to, moving on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Moving on to another question. Um, someone wants to know your favorite Disney film. Well, I would, I would say if you can tell by my persona, I would say Zootopia. <laughs> uh, Cause yeah, because like, I like the, it's just, just, just so much. I love about that film. There's the, there's the characters, there's the animation, there's the, like the, the sets, like the, yeah, the setting. Like and even like the whole like the whole like the storytelling as well is really really top notch and like the topicality and everything like is like like very relevant and very uh and like and very like and very intriguing as well how how an anim- how even an animated film would go would even go into a to a dark topic like terrorism believe it or not like to the point like because you know what the uh, spoilers ahead. Where like there's the there's the character of uh, of bellwether tr- uh, trying to trying to like uh, turn all the predators predators in Zootopia like into into savages so that they, so that they so that she'd be able to ruin their reputation she would kind of take over as mayor. Mm-hmm. So and that's and that's literally and that is and that do, that is literally not only terrorism but also committing uh, a coup d'état as well. Yeah, I, I think and, he, yeah, go on. Yeah, like so, like and I yeah, like beforehand and there was other Disney films I was very very fond of. There was uh, Snow White and Seven Dwarfs, there was uh there was Beauty and the Beast, The Fox and the Hound, and also um like I was also very fond of uh like I need, like I'm still very fond of these films to this day. Like even like, also Wrecked Ralph as well. That was another big favorite of mine. And and before Zootopia, I would have said that Wreck It Ralph was my favorite of the computer animated uh, films by, by Walt Disney Animation Studios until and now, but now it would be it would be Zootopia or Zootropolis as it's called in this country, and uh, in, in Ireland and the UK and mm-hmm. and a few a few places in Europe. Yeah, honestly, I gotta say I'm completely with you. I adore Zootopia. I think it's like for me. Um, it's the best animated film from the last decade. It's such a phenomenal movie. And like a lot of the mo- things that you have listed, uh, I'm totally on your side on, uh, in terms of like the whole message that is trying to c- come across and just a, a gorgeous looking film as well. Uh, huh. uh, we do have another question. Uh, what was it like working on the DC properties for Space Jam: A New Legacy? Since you did mention that you worked on uh, the DC scene as well as the Wonder Woman sequence. Well, like it, it was actually very intriguing. Like uh, there was there was uh, there was some key sequences, some key shots that I was able to help out with, uh, like preparing for the ink and paint process. Like there was the part where uh, there was the part where like uh, like Daffy Duck is like. I did this. It was me. I masterminded this entire operation. <laughs> and I'm like, and, you, you, and then you turn out. It turns out that Superman was the one that stopped the stopped the train from end up heading the the heading the orphanage place. And like, I was able to help out with the the ink and paint process for that. And it was very, it was a lot of fun. I will say. And there was also another scene as well, like that I actually d- I did help I, I did help out with that, like that I do find that I am very proud of. There's also the like where Bugs Bunny is sort of like uh, doing the Barber of Seville uh, thing with uh, LeBron James, where yes. he, he's kind of, like and where he's just kind of talking, like kind of talking with LeBron, like LeBron, like where like how what brings him to Toon World, and then he explains that he like he he he's been he's been kind of 
been banished there by Al G, and he want, and he's, he has to play, and he's been challenged to play basketball so that he can he can get his son Dom back. And yet, and funny that was another scene that was animated by uh, Sean Keller as well. That Disney animator I was talking, I was telling you about. Yes. Beforehand. Yes. Um, we actually got an interesting question here. Um, how do you feel about the removal of Pepe Le Pew from Space Jam: A New Legacy? Well, honestly, like I'm, 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 I'm not like, honestly, like I'm not like. Even though I, that scene would have been, I would have been a lot of, would have been a lot of fun. Like uh, just uh, t- like uh, as they talked about on the Variety or Deadline article, I thought that scene would have been, that scene would have been very, very intriguing, very interesting, very funny. I uh, like uh, it would be very relevant as well, like with the current social issues of, you know, uh, consent and stuff. Mm-hmm. But all, but then again, like, but then again, like it that. Then again, like uh, the scene with they had with Yosemite Sam was stuck with uh, on the piano was so it's just as good. And that was another scene I actually helped out with uh, preparing for the for the tones and shadow process, like the compositing. I was I was able to help out to prepare the scene for that. Ah, nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I guess I'm gonna go with uh, just one more question before we move on to the next stuff. Um. Is there an animation studio you would want to work for? Or are you just happy to go and work with whoever? Or do you have a specific goal of which studio you would like to work for the most? Well, there are two studios I would, I would de- I'm definitely uh, I'm definitely eyeing for in my career. Okay. There's Cartoon Saloon and there's Walt Disney Animation Studios. Those are the two studios I would definitely love to work for in the future. Oh, because, I, like, I'm, like, yeah, go especially on. Cartoon Saloon because they because they've hit very close to home to me. Not only with not only because of that open day, but because of their because they're based in Ireland, like me, I I can totally relate. Oh yeah, a- absolutely. Considering um, Ireland's rich history with animation, especially with the Don Blue films, and now that they're still gro- going strong, especially with the Cartoon Saloon stuff, I can under- I can understand why you would have such a great interest in working there. And I'm sure a lot of animators would have a lot of interest to uh, work there as well. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, if there, if there's one more thing about that Pepe Le Pew question, if if, if you're okay with le- letting me uh, kind of kind of say my pace on it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, like uh, the, the, like Pepe Le Pew, like uh, I don't like in a way, like even though that scene would have been very funny, I think at the same time, like um, like I'm 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 not too upset about Pepe Le Pew not being in the film because he's not like even though like I I, I do I do I, I did kind of like Pepe Le Pew when I was a kid at the same time but at the same time he can be a bit annoying sometimes like how he's always he's all, like every time he mistakes Penelope Pussycat for a skunk because he because of the every time like every time she ends up getting the, the stripe on her tip and the white stripe on her back because like from white hair dye or something or paint or anything like that like he like he's always kind of lunching at Penelope and like yeah, and, and it's like in a way, he can be he can be a bit he can, it can be a bit douchey, but then again, it, like they're like they're, I've seen worse. Let me tell you, I've seen worse even in real life, and like Pepe Le Pew would be kind of a kind of a parody of like people like of like uh, of people who'd be who'd end up committing sexual harassment. I would say to be fair on Pepe Le Pew, he's not he, he's not the worst character. Like but like uh, but they're like but he's not he's not particularly he's not. One of, he's not one of my favorites either. They're like he's not he's not like what he's not kind of up he's not up there with uh, like Bugs Bunny or Lola or mm-hmm. even like uh, Daffy Duck and Porky Pig in my opinion. But then again, like he has he has a he has a pretty decent character anyway. Yeah, like, he has a pretty decent character with um, like what I said beforehand. Anyways. Yeah, no, I I get what you mean. For me, like I understand where you're going with, and for me. There's a part of me that doesn't want to see Pepe Le Pew to be like out of the picture and no longer be used anymore. I mean, he could still be a fun character, but I do agree with like his old his old routine and stuff like that. Yeah, it kind of aged like milk nowadays, but I, I feel like 
What what the, what Warner Brothers should do with Pepe Le Pew, I feel like they should go and reboot the character, like still keep that aspect of the romantic skunk about him or the romantic French skunk, but do but rework him in a way that could be more acceptable um, in today's world. And I, I'm sure there are plenty of ways that Warner Brothers can find a way to actually make that work. I mean, they've rebooted. Yeah, the yeah go on. Oh, you, you're going ahead. Yeah, because um, the, the Warner Brothers has a long history of constantly rebooting their characters and changing up their personalities from what they used to be. Case in point, look at Daffy Duck. Uh, so honestly, it wouldn't be hard to imagine that Pepe Le Pew will come back one day, but in a way that is more acceptable to the modern world. Yeah, like, and there's actually one good example of this already. There's, Do you know the series uh, Wabbits? Oh, Looney Wabbits, Tunes yes. Or New Looney Tunes. There's actually like Pepe, Pepe Le Pew actually appears in there as a James Bond style character where he's trying to woo this uh, this uh, this other this fox girl and like but there's always uh, things always standing in his way. <laughs> that... and, like I've always I, I found that very very funny and like I found it to be a very a fresh new take on Pepe Le Pew to be like in like if you ask me. Yeah, exactly. And that's a great example there. And overall, Pepe, like the thing with Pepe Le Pew is just that he just needs a fresh new take. That's all it really needs. Like there are ways to stay true to the character, like how he's always been, but just something different, something new. But anyways, with that said, let's go and jump on to the next story because we got plenty of more things to go and discuss. And the first thing that we have here is actually a trailer. And um, this is a trailer for what's going to be coming soon on Disney Plus. And uh, you, you've seen this one, right? Yeah, yeah, I have. All right. So um, uh, how about we just take a little bit of our time to go and uh, check this trailer out? So with that said, let's go right ahead and uh, check out the trailer for the upcoming animated series, which is Chip and Dale. Park life. I uh, just need to start. There we Chip go. Chip and Dale just found a big new home on Disney Plus. <laughs> One's a little too confused. <laughs> One's a little too curious. <laughs> and sometimes they're both a little too chaotic. <laughs> but Chip and Dale are never too little for big adventures, <laughs> big laughs. And big snacks. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Little buddies. <laughs> big trouble. <laughs> Park yourselves on Disney Plus for Chip and Dale Park Life. Original series landing July 28th on Disney Plus. And that was Chippendale Park Life, which is actually going to be coming very soon on one, this Wednesday, actually, just in a couple of days as we are recording this. So, uh, Jerry, what is your take on uh, Chippendale Park Life? It, I think it looks pretty. It looks pretty. Pretty cute. Like I, I, I do. I like the art style that they're going with, and like I thought, I found some of the some of the. Some of the the scenes in the, in that trailer to be quite funny and and pretty and pretty cute at the like at the end of the day. Yeah, I I do find it cute as well. And the funny thing with uh, Chip and Dale is that I, actually, just to give you a little bit of context, believe it or not, I actually grew up with a lot of the Chip and Dale cartoons. I used to have this uh, VHS that had uh, a bit of a collection of like four to five different Chip and Dale cartoons and. I, w I, w I would often watch them repeatedly and I would say like I know there's been like this huge debate about Chip and Dale. Uh, uh, no, not not about Chip and Dale, but there's this huge debate about Disney cartoons versus Warner Brothers cartoons. And the one thing I will say that if there is one thing that Disney would top Warner Brothers on, it would be uh, the their rodent cartoons, I guess you could call it, because uh, Chip and Dale has often like I, I, I see Chip and Dale as like better characters for cartoons than the than the ones that they would do for Warner Brothers, like uh, like those gopher brothers or, or or stuff like that that's the one thing first. yeah the, yeah those guys like that that's the one that i feel like 
If I would have a choice between those gophers and Chip and Dale, I would definitely go with the Chip and Dale cartoons. And in here... Me too. Yeah, and in here, it looks like it's continuing that legacy. Now, I know some people might ask, well, why don't they just do more Chip and Dale cartoons in the uh, Paul Reddish Mickey Mouse shorts? That is true, but then again, this one feels a little... Like, already you can tell this one is a little bit more different than what they're even going with for... Uh, the Paul Ruddish Mickey Mouse cartoons. This one has a little bit more of its own unique style. Uh, this one kind of has a different approach when it comes to their cartoons. Like in here, it seems like it's not it's not going to be dialogue driven. Like even when you hear Chip and Dale, when they talk, a lot of it is just like gibberish. Like they don't actually speak in like full on um, like they don't speak in actual sentences like in here. <laughs> Yeah, so that, okay. that, yes, with that quick little moment. And not not to mention that on top of that, we also do see that there are going to be several different recognizable Disney characters that are going to be involved. I mean, we do have a few, uh, like, we, we do have a few new characters, but at the same time, we see Pluto is going to be involved. We see Fifi that's also going to make an appearance. And not only that, but even Donald is actually going to be in there. And, yeah, you know... Donald, yeah, and I, and I feel like that is actually perfect, and it does stay true to those classic Chip and Dale cartoons, because if there are, like, the, the Disney characters that do interact with Chip and Dale the most would be Donald Duck and Pluto, and if we are going to get more of those types of cartoons, then, you know, that, that would actually be great, because, like, Chip and Dale really is at their best when they are working with someone, when it's not just them on their little adventures that like they would need some kind of foil or they need some kind of um, not antagonist, but a rival that they could go and interact with in order to really make the most out of their cartoons or what they're trying to do with what they have. Yeah, they're totally like, and I've, I've always really enjoyed like Chip and Dale, like, uh, like, like kind of up in arms with the uh, Donald Duck at, uh, trying to get like nuts and stuff, uh, especially in the one cartoon that the uh, one cartoon from the late forties called uh, Toy Tankers. It was a Christmas theme. Oh yes, uh, yes, I remember that one. Oh, that that was so good. Yeah. Yeah, that that was actually one where with my with with my VHSs as a kid, like I would watch that every year, and that's always like the more like uh, among my VHSs, that's always the more comical one. Like if you want to have a good laugh during the cartoons, but two cartoons in particular that I remember the most from Chip and Dale, one is working for peanuts, uh, which is uh, Donald duck working at the zoo. And he has this big elephant to take care of. And like, like he would try to treat the elephant with a bunch of peanuts, but Chip and Dale would go and intervene and take all the peanuts and there's another one that I remember is um, I forgot the name of the cartoon, but um, it, it's it, it involves Donald Duck with Chip and Dale and it has a lot of apples and they're pretty much constantly at war with each other uh, to, to, to pretty much eat apples because Donald Donald has an apple farm and Chip and Dale are just the pests like constantly eating Donald's apples. Oh god, I think I remember, I remember this one. I ha I think I saw this on a VHS before, but I kind of forgot the name. I kind of forgot the name too, but I I could always look I could always look it up anyways. <laughs> yeah, that that is true. We could. Uh, I can't do it right now because well, I'm in a podcast. I'm currently running a show, so <laughs> usually in these situations, what I do is just wait until the chat wall tries to correct me on this. It's like it was like, guys, what's the name of this cartoon? Okay, thanks. You, that's what that's what I would do in these situations. It's just wait for the chat wall to go and correct me or to answer what is that cartoon specifically. <laughs> uh, some people are saying Donald Applecore or, the, or actually the chat wall right now. They're they're actually doing that uh, that Applecore joke. It was like Applecore, Baltimore. Who's your friend? Me. <laughs> <sighs> it's Donald Applecore. Yeah, I just checked out the Wikipedia page, and that, that and that's right. It's Donald Applecore. There we go. So that yeah. So those were the two that I really remember the most, and I that I really love with Chip and Dale. It's uh, yeah, working for Peanuts and Donald Applecore, and uh, with the tra and um, going back to Chip and Dale Park Life, what we got here. It look it looks a lot of fun actually, and you know, come to really think like when you do think about it. 
it really has been a long time since we even had anything with Chip and Dale. I mean, yeah, sure. A lot of people would talk about, well, what about Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, especially when they did technically come back on uh, the DuckTales reboot? Well, yes, there is that. But I mean, like, the, this is Chip and Dale going back to their roots. This is the original Chip and Dale uh, that Walt Disney created uh, for their new, you know, for their cartoons. You know, and, and this is this is what I actually really like about this is this really great throwback of um, of Chip and Dale of what they used to be. It's not like those crazy Rescue Rangers adventures like we don't have Chip and Dale dressed up as like Indiana Jones and like ready for like Magnum P.I. or whatever. It's just Chip and Dale as chipmunks and their goal is to like, gra you know, find some food wherever they could scavenge and try to navigate ah fudge nabbit i hit my elbow and try to navigate their way through suburban life you know and, and it's been a long time since we even had uh this kind of chip and dale so that's the part i'm really excited uh to see with these cartoons it's just going back to that old chip and dale that we remember and that we love back then yeah, definitely. Like, I'd be on your, I'd totally be on your side of that right there. But like, like uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, I do think it is. It is a pretty good series. Like, and, and it is one of the, it is definitely one of the Disney Afternoon favorites for a lot of people. Kind of like, it's kind of up there with Ducktales, Darkwing Duck, and Tailspin. Yeah, like, it's really, it's right up there with those ones. Yeah, and like, and but I, and I'd be on your side as well uh, with the, you know, you know, Chip and Dale going back to the roots and stuff. But you go on now. No, but no, I'm not denying that at all. You're absolutely correct with this. This is not to knock Chippendale Rescue Rangers whatsoever. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad series or anything like that. And I do understand how it is like a massive cult favorite amongst the Disney afternoon shows. But what I'm saying is that there is a distinct difference between the Chippendale that we got in Rescue Rangers and the Chippendale that we would have in the old cartoons. And this Chippendale brings back the the ones from the old cartoons that we've never had in a long long time that's what i'm saying you know that's why that, that that's pretty much why i'm saying that you know it's a nice refresher to have chip and dale back to their roots because it's been so long since we've had it considering that for the most part when we would see chip and dale it's usually for uh stuff for stuff like rescue rangers but again there was also uh to Mickey on the Roadster Racers, they actually do kind of, kind of like go back to their roots, sort of with the with the certain segments and the Mickey and the Roadster Racers. If you remember, I did see some clips of them of Chip and Dale segments and the Roadster Racers. There is that. You do have a point. I haven't seen uh, Roadster. Uh, I haven't seen Roadster Racers myself, but um, I, I do get where you're going with. Yeah, so like that is true. Like with the uh, preschool shows, like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Yeah, there's probably Chip and Dale that would be making appearances there. Or th then again, you could also say there is technically Kingdom Hearts, where like they're brought in as like rocket ship engineers because that 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 that's a thing in the world of Kingdom Kingdom Hearts. You gotta expect the unexpected, and uh, who who do you need to call to go and uh, fix up your rocket ship? Who else? Chip and Dale, of course. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, like. But then again, like uh, Chip and Dale, like uh, Chip and Dale Park Life is like really Chip and Dale, like uh, really revolves around Chip and Dale kind of do like being like being ordinary chipmunks at the end of the day. It really like whereas Roadster Racers are just like kind of side characters. Chip and Dale Park Life is all about really Chip and Dale. Exactly, and it's just to go back into that classic Chip and Dale, and really making the most out of these old cartoon characters that hasn't often been used in a long time. Yeah, there, there are different ways that they could reboot them. But the, again, this is all about Chip and Dale going back to their roots. And that's what I'm excited for. Uh, you're still there, uh, Jerry? Just yes, wanna... yes, I, I am. I, okay. I am. Like, uh, like, I have nothing else really to say. All right. So that's good. Okay, so... 
With that said, let us now go into the chat wall. And I would like to ask you, what do you think about the trailer that we got here for Chippendale Park Life? Are you guys excited to go and check this one out? Are you a little bit if iffy? Are you a little hesitant? Let me know what you think on this. Yeah, let's see now. <clears throat> This looks cute. The animation looks nice. Certainly better than the Mickey Mouse shorts. Oh boy, hot take right there. And it did make me chuckle a few times. I will definitely be checking this one out when it will be released on Wednesday. Though I am curious to what rescue what the Rescue Rangers movie is going to be like. Also, could you say that Chip and Dale are, are the original Scrat from Ice Age? That is a good question. I would... Yeah. Well... Um, not really. I would say more... Like, because the thing is, at the end, like, and at the end of the cartoons, usually Chip and Dale actually do get their nuts. I would say the original Scrat from Ice Age would be Wile E. Coyote. I think that would be more accurate. Oh, yeah, like, that's totally. Yeah, oh, my God, and that is true. I almost forgot that there is going to be that Rescue Rangers movie. And from what yeah, I've I, I, remember, I remember that, too. Yeah, yeah, and from what I've heard, they're, they're going to go on a completely different direction. It's going to be more kind of like this Roger Rabbit plot line more so than it is an actual Rescue Rangers thing. So there, there's a part of me that, that is very curious about it, but also there's another part of me that feels like, well, it is going to be a, 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 like a live-action animation hybrid, and that's where I'm like, I don't know. We'll, we'll see we'll see especially when it is like <laughs> especially when it is straight to disney plus it's like yeah it's not directly in theaters okay well, if you say so disney <laughs> all right anyway <laughs> anyways um i may not be too big of a chip and dale fan with the exception of rescue rangers uh, that show slaps but i'm quite fond of what i see it boasts a very cute art style, the pair surprisingly work without dialogue, and the cameos from different Disney alumni are pretty clever, so I'll probably check it out in between episodes of What If. Maybe uh, it'll still adapt the message, the messages of Rescue Rangers, such as Always Be Yourself, or Stay the fl Flippity Flop Away from Cults. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we'll see a little bit of those. I would actually, I wouldn't be surprised if there would be like little references to Rescue Rangers here and there in park life like considering that they are also doing throwbacks to stuff like um like uh like uh, pluto and donald duck and stuff i wouldn't be surprised if suddenly they would also put put in like little jokes or little references here and there from rescue rangers especially when technically this is a part of this anthropomorphic animal disney world that they are setting themselves in so it wouldn't necessarily be out of place All right. Um, let's see. What else do yeah. we have here? Uh, what else do we have? Um, this is kind of a treat for me since I watched a lot of Chip and Dale cartoons when I was a kid. My current favorites being uh, Toy Tinkers and Dragon Around. I am a bit. Oh, my God. Dragon Around. That's another one I completely forgot. Oh, that is true. Anyways, um, I am a bit mixed about the art style so far, but I will probably get used to it. Besides that, the animation is quite nice. The humor is kind of good. And it will be interesting to see Chip and Dale interact with more characters besides the usual ones like Donald. Uh, I'll try to uh, I'll try to watch it when it comes out. All right. Uh, I really enjoyed the Chip and Dale cartoons as a kid. Uh, it was an old cartoon where Donald Duck was making peanut butter. And I feel like the animation looks more like a mixture of the Mickey Mouse cartoons of nowadays and DuckTales. And if there ever is another character in Chippendale Park Life, it would be their uh, love interest, Clarice. Um, I would yeah, give, that's, a good, that's uh, a good one. That is true. I almost forgot about Clarice. I would give this a watch because it does remind me a lot of the old cartoons of Chippendale. And I think they already have a rival in this trailer if they really do. Yeah, that is true. I mean, they didn't introduce her here, but... Yeah, it would make sense if we would see Clarice in this. Oh my god! Well, that's the that's the that was the short that she was in. I do I remember it very well. Yes, that is true. And, and technically, 
on the way, I was about to say, well, technically there are some, uh, like maybe we, we saw girl chipmunk characters, but no, like it was actually, um, it was actually just uh, a couple of bunnies that have their ears uh, tied together. Okay, no, but that would be true. That you know, that would be interesting to see if they would actually uh, have Clarice be involved. Uh, like, especially like if the, it would also be a great bonus if they would present this in Japan. Because I don't know if you know this, but my God, Clarice is huge in Japan. She is. Yeah, I'm aware of that too. I see a lot of fan art of, of Clarice from uh, from Japanese artists on social media. Like it's uh, like it's very it's very neat. I will say she's got a lot of attention out there. Oh, especially. <laughs> Yeah, the fact that Clarice is about as popular as Chip and Dale themselves, or even as part of, like, the Fab Five, like, with Goofy, Donald, Mickey. Like, you would see Clarice just be hanging out with, like, Minnie and Daisy. It's, like, really this, like, this character we haven't seen in a long, long time, yet she, like, she is legit huge in Japan. I think also Oswald is also pretty big there, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like, uh, Cl Clarice is, uh, is big, uh, she has she has her own, uh, uh, She's featured in, in Disneyland Tokyo a lot there. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah, that's where I noticed the most um, where Clarice is so popular because like she she would often make major appearances in uh, Tokyo Disneyland. Uh, anyways, uh, let's move on to a couple more uh, uh, comments here. The series looks fun. It does look like a very cute series and it does stay true to the original Chippendale shorts. The animation does kind of remind me a little bit of the re recent Mickey Mouse cartoons. Also, it is really great to see Chip and Dale going back to their original roots after their personalities have changed over the years. Also, I don't know if you remember, but Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers is unfortunately getting a live action CG hybrid movie for Disney+. Plus. Yes, we do remember. We did talk about it a little bit. Yeah, of course. Uh, I feel a bit intrigued about the show. The animation looks pretty cute, and I'm pretty glad that they are going back to the original route to the classic shorts. And considering that it was made by the same guys behind Augie and the Cockroaches and Zig and Sharko, me and my siblings might enjoy these when it comes out this Wednesday. All right. So we see a lot of people are actually pretty excited. So it's not just us that uh, want to see Chippendale uh, Park Life. Uh-huh. All right, so moving on to the next story, this is actually a last minute addition. This was something that was just announced today. And um, I, I wanted to ask you, like, if you were, you know, if you're good to talk about this. And it turns out, like, yeah, we're both we're both major Pokemon fans. We both grew up with the <laughs> yes. series. Um, I mean, I mean, indeed. So it would be very interesting to know your thoughts when we shall discuss about the live action series. Yes, today, uh, Netflix has revealed that they are currently going to be working on a live action series based on Pokemon. Now, we don't necessarily have a lot of information as of yet. They are in the very early stages of making it. But so far, one person who is attached to the project is actually Joe Henderson, who is the co-showrunner and executive producer of Lucifer, uh, which right now is having its final series, or uh, they're currently making the final series of it. So immediately after Lucifer, Joe is going to go and work on this Pokemon series, again, to go and write and executive produce. Now, this is going to be a major mission for Netflix in order to go and turn uh, some animes into live action. They're currently going to be they're currently preparing to go and release their live action series of uh, of uh, Cowboy Bebop. And they are also currently working on a one piece series, uh, according to this article on variety and they have recently had some experience before by turning a uh, death note into a live action film not to mention considering how netflix is technically the streaming home of pokemon where they got a lot of the original anime series there from their very beginnings in pokemon indigo league all the way up to the most recent one to pokemon journeys so that's all that we currently know so far. And by the way, no, we don't have any confirmation 
if any of the people who worked on uh, Detective Pikachu, the 2019 movie, is also going to be involved. We don't know if Leg uh, if uh, Legendary is also going to be working on that or if the plot line would even be associated with Detective Pikachu. All we know is that Netflix is going to be working on a live action series based on Pokemon and it's going to have Joe Henderson producing and writing it. So as a longtime Pokemon fan, Jerry, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I would say, well, good luck with it. Uh, like, uh, like, uh, how, like, no matter how it turns out, like, like, I, I just want to say good luck to them because, like, even though I don't, I don't, I don't know much about Lucifer and, and stuff or or Joe Henderson's work, but I do remember uh, Detective Pikachu. I did see the movie in the in the cinema, and I thought it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. and I thought, and I really enjoyed Ryan Reynolds' uh, uh, performance as as uh, Pikachu. I thought it was, I thought it was very neat. Yeah, he, it, it was a lot of fun. And it's like it's not a great movie per se, but the best thing about it is actually how they brought the world of Pokemon to life, how they took a, a variety of Pokemon, brought them to live action in a way that is not only realistic, but is very respectable to the original designs of the Pokemon. So that so that aspect turn like going into a series, that is definitely something that I would be absolutely excited about. Yeah, me too. Like, I, I would definitely agree with you there. <laughs> but I will say, though, that even though it is actually pretty exciting and I could see the potential with this, especially when building more of like the world building of Pokemon and bringing that to live action. And who knows, maybe like developing some, you know, some live action versions of more legendary Pokemon, because the only one that we got last time was just uh, Mewtwo. But I will say that. Honestly, hearing about this news, I can't help but feel a little bit hesitant. I'm just a bit iffy, and there's just one thing about it that honestly scares me a little about this franchise. And, like, you could call me a bit pessimistic, but I, there's just something that makes me feel more cautious than optimistic on this. And that is from the fact that it is from Netflix. And lately, from what we have been hearing, and I know technically Pokemon is based on a game, and uh, like with Netflix, they had a great experience so far with their adaptation of The Witcher, but this still technically does count as adapting an anime onto live action. And I don't know if you have seen the live action um, movie of Death Note, but... Uh, oh, I have. Oh, dear. That... <laughs> Yeah, that thing is, uh, that was something, all right. And if Pokemon is... Like, yeah, to be fair, Willem Dafoe, like, Willem Dafoe did, did, a, did a decent job, though, as whoever, whoever the villain, whoever the villain guy was again. Oh, Ryuk? Yeah, Ryuk, yeah. Like, yeah. I Willem Dafoe did, did all right. Yeah, well, I mean, that is actually the one good thing that, like, Willem Dafoe's casting as Ryuk, that actually does make sense. That actually does fit well. Everything else, though, is one of those extremely rare cases where the live-action remake is somehow cartoonier than the cartoon itself. <laughs> yeah, indeed. It, it was just... And that's the one thing that I'm so worried about, is if somehow this live action series would somehow be turned into that uh, to be turned into another death note or like even like with the past experiences of turning animes into live action that like they have a long history of that not going well rather it be stuff like Dragon Ball Evolution or even with the 2017 Ghost in the Shell movie like they they can have some complicated history right over there so with something like this it it, it just makes me feel a little bit concerned now granted this is a lot this is a live action series and not a movie so things could actually work uh, work out a little bit differently and i think ultimately like, what could be a good determining factor is to see how the Cowboy Bebop series is going to be, considering that's going to be coming soon in a few months or so. Yeah, it's going to be coming out in th this fall, from what I remember that they did announce. So I'm sure a lot of people will be keeping an eye out on that. 
And that will determine to see if um, Netflix adapting animes into a live action show would even be a good idea, especially if they're going to be in the mood to go and make more and more and more, like not just with this one, but also with One Piece as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I do, and I do remember uh, seeing like a couple of episodes of One Piece. I thought it was, I thought, I thought they were very, they were very good. So, uh, like, I'm, I'm pretty interested to seeing how they would uh, translate that into live action and everything. Mm-hmm. And, and keep in mind, I like, uh, I could be wrong, and this show could actually turn out great, and even the Cowboy Bebop series could also be turn out great. But it's just right now. Um, it's just this idea of adapting Japanese products and bringing them to the world of live action. It just doesn't have a good and strong history. I mean, there have been a few good moments. Like, um, for me, I'd say the Speed Racer movie from the Wachowski sisters, that was actually very good. They did a great, honestly, it's again, it's not a great movie, but they did a pretty solid job, especially adapting the style of Speed Racer onto live action. So there are moments where it can work out, but then there are also other times when it could be like the, like, uh, like I said, like with Dragon Ball Evolution and it could really fall flat in its face. So for me, the the part of me that makes it very cautious about this, despite being a Pokemon fan myself, um, like what makes me feel cautious is just the long history of these moments not really working out as well. Yeah, like that, like totally. Like I had to remember the, like those like Dragon Ball Evolution as well. Jesus. <laughs> Like, oh, geez. yeah, you don't have to be a Dragon Ball fan to know that movie was just horrible. Like, oh, my God, the way. Yeah, the, the way they try to bring Dragon Ball to the big screen or to try to adapt it into live action. Like, yeah, it was more of a joke. And yeah, it, 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 it's one of those where you do have to question if the, if, if the people who worked on the film or like uh, any of like the producers, the directors or the executives, like, were they even familiar with the with the franchise? Do they know what they're handling with? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I, guess I, would, uh, I would agree with you there. So, yeah, overall, though, I would say when it comes to um, when it comes to this, I just feel like I I'm just very cautious. I'm not going to say that this is going to be terrible or that this is not worth watching. It could. And there are ways that it could actually work out well. And not to mention, there is also Joe Henderson, um, who has been doing a pretty good job lately, especially with the amount of acclaim that he has been getting for the series Lucifer. If this is going to be the, his next step after uh, after Lucifer, then honestly, it could be in good hands. But ultimately, I'm going to be in a wait and see kind of attitude where it would be, you know, it would be I, I would definitely be rooting for this um, to, to be a great hit as a Pokemon fan myself. I would be down for a lot for uh, a good live action Pokemon series, but I would not be surprised if this would fall flat in its face. Mm. Like, and I, and I would just say, well, just no matter how it turns out, I wish them the best of luck with it. That's all. That's all I would say. Yep, you said it. You said it best, actually. That we all we can do now is just wish the people yeah. making this the best of luck. <laughs> All right. So uh, with that said, I would like to go into the chat wall. And now I want to ask you, how do you feel about the announcement of the live action series of Pokemon by Netflix? Do you think this is a great idea? Do you think this is going to be amazing? Are you a little more hesitant about this? Uh, are you a little more cautious, kind of like me? Let me know what you think on, on, on all this. Yeah. Mm? Sorry, Jerry, you said something? No, so like I just kind of got I got I got kind of got cut off there for another another bit, but I, I'm back now. Oh, okay, okay, great, great, great that you're back. Anyways, um, I'm a sucker for the Pokemon games. Plus, I watched the show a ton as a kid, 
So this could be a good watch, especially since nowadays live action media based on video games is getting gradually better, particularly with the film with uh, the film. So uh, nice. Uh, they design oh with the film so nice they designed it twice. Uh, but all fears for the show could be erased if they manage to bring Ryan Reynolds back as Pikachu. Hell, don't even have him speak. Just have him say Pika Pika over and over again. Oh my God, that would actually be hilarious. Just have. One, <laughs> just have one episode where you you have Ryan Reynolds come in play as Pikachu, but all he just says is Pikachu. I would be down for Pikachu. that. Not not gonna lie. Pika Pika. <laughs> Pika, Pika. <laughs> what is it, Pikachu? Pika Pika. Pika, Pika, Pika. Pika. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I'm sure a lot of people would be down for it. Like no matter how that episode would be, just have Ryan Reynolds just say Pikachu, and we would be sold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> oh let's see now i remember seeing Detef uh, detective pikachu in theaters and i really enjoyed it but i it wasn't up in the levels as sonic the hedgehog but i do enjoy it uh do enjoy its aspects like how they designed the pokemons in that movie however i'm not sure uh, uh, uh however i'm not really sure if i'm up to this because i think it might end up like death note but we'll have to win if it really does well on Netflix. And speaking of, ga of games, I actually got a PS5 last week, and it's awesome. All right, nice work there. Uh, anyways, I'm ac I am honestly so conflicted. On one hand, I really do not trust Netflix with adapting anime into live action or even anime being adapted into a live action period. Uh, however, I am incredibly interested to see what Joe Henderson can bring to the table. As someone who does watch Lucifer, he has definitely done a great job on Lucifer and I definitely think he could do a great job with the writing. So we'll wait and see with what happens. All right, all right. So we do have uh, confidence in, uh, in uh, Joe Henderson there. Even though uh -huh. I was... Even though I was disappointed in the Detective Pikachu movie, since it was almost nothing like the game, I do have faith in Joe Henderson that he can pull this off since he did such a great job with Lucifer, so I will probably be watching it when it comes out. Also, Matt, will you be reviewing it when this comes out? Oh, and are you going to uh, update your Twitch page since... Oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later. Uh, well, And as for reviewing it, we'll, we'll see. We'll just wait and see. Uh, let's see. Do we have any other comments here just to double check? All right. Um, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to go with just, uh, one more comment before we jump into the next story. While Netflix has not really been good with Japanese series like the aforementioned Death Note, they have actually handled video game series pretty good like The Witcher, Castlevania, and recently uh DOTA, so uh it could go either way. Uh I'm trying to remember DOTA, but anyways, um uh, I do remember it, Castlevania though. Oh yeah. I, I do remember that being a very good series. Oh my oh, god. Oh yeah, yeah. Castlevania, I've heard amazing things about it, of course. Um if I do have uh, a wish for this series, uh I would like to see them get the artist who designed the Pokemon for for from the Detective Pikachu movie, RJ Palmer. Yeah, then that's gonna yeah, that's honestly my biggest question for me with all this. It's um is it going to be connected to Detective Pikachu or is it gonna be can uh is it gonna be done in its own is it gonna be more its own thing? And that's what I'm gonna be curious about. Especially since uh nowadays I have heard rumors about um uh, I have heard rumors that Netflix might be acquiring, like do a full-on buyout on Legendary. The studio that actually made uh, Detective Pikachu, that could actually be a possibility. But again, this is all in the case of like we'll have to wait and see. Uh huh. So, there's that. Yeah, there is. All right. So moving on to the next story that I have over here, um, th uh, we're gonna be going back to Disney Plus because they actually have some animated shorts that um, sound actually pretty exciting to go and uh, check out considering that the series itself so far has a really good reputation, especially some of which are actually Oscar nominated. So um, seeing more of these is going to be a really awesome treat, especially when this is the side of Pixar that's really going experimental. 
and yeah, totally uh, I've, I've definitely watched a lot of the spark shorts myself on disney plus they're ve they're very good yes yeah, so what i'm talking about is of course going to be the spark shorts uh disney has officially made the announcement that not only are there going to be two new spark shorts coming soon this september but also a feature length documentary and um, they again, they are going to be more experimental. One is actually going to be a fully hand-drawn animated short. Another one will be uh, computer animated, while the documentary, of course, is going to be live action. And the uh, documentary, by the way, will mostly be highlighting uh, the making of these two new animated shorts. So reading from my source here on Deadline, just to go and quickly describe what these shorts are, uh, the first one that I have here is called 20 something. Oh, fudge nabbit. Wait a minute. I just realized I forgot to put the uh, screen down. Anyways. All right. Back to what I was talking about. Uh, yes. Our first one that we got is going to be 20 something in which it states here, uh, created using hand-drawn animation. 20 something examines the challenges and insecurities of adulting. Some days you're nailing it, while other days you're just a stack of kids hiding in a trench coat, hoping no one notices. The film's protagonist is Gia, who finds herself in the exact scenario uh, the night of her 21st birthday. 20-something is produced by Eric Langley and will debut on Disney Plus on September 10th, which, by the way, uh, it will be directed by Afton Corbin. The next animated short that we got here is going to be called Nona, to which it is going to be directed by Louis Gonzalez, which it states here. Nona centers on a grandmother who plans on spending her day off shutting out, uh, shutting out the world to watch her favorite TV show, EWW Smackdown Wrestling. However, when her five-year-old granddaughter Renee is unexpectedly dropped off, Nona is caught between her two favorite things. Renee wants to play, while the normally dotting Nona wrestles with wanting to watch the SmackDown, leading to a decisive showdown between the two and a loving compromise. The film, produced by Courtney Casper Kent, launches on the streaming service on September 17th. And finally, uh, we have the documentary itself, which is going to be called A Spark Story. So it says here, the final project, A Spark Story, is a co-production of Pixar and Supper Club, uh, who previously made Chef's Table. The doc offers an intimate look at Pixar's Spark Shorts filmmaking process, honing in specifically on the process of Corbin and Gonzalez as they strive to bring their deeply personal visions to the screen. Jason Sternum, Brian, uh, Brian McGinn, and David Gelb produce. The film premieres on Disney Plus on September 24th. And I believe a couple of those people are also going to be uh, directing this as well, or actually just one of them, in which the uh, uh, the directors of the documentary is Jason St uh, Jason Sternum and Leanne, and Leanne Dare. However, Jerry, honestly, there is something that I did not tell you, but um, there is also... Yeah. There is also another announcement that did recently happen that I did put in at the last second, but I did not tell you about it. Maybe you have heard about this. Maybe like just before starting this, you saw like on social media that this was going on. But um, I decided why the fridge not considering that it is a little bit related to this and uh, that this is more animated shorts on Disney+. Plus. Uh, why don't we go and talk about it? Do you know what I'm uh, talking about, uh, by the way? Um, not not exactly. Like, I, I might need a bit of a refresher. Well, it is actually, again, this is something that was just announced today. Brand new hand-drawn animated Goofy shorts from Walt Disney Animation Studios that are going to be called How to Stay at Home, which is a new set of of Goofy cartoons uh, in which we will see Goofy tackling uh, some things during the pandemic, what we had to go and endure, rather it be wearing a mask, rather it be learning how to cook and make some new recipes, or if it's just to go and binge watch. 
In fact, considering that this is a series of three cartoons, that's what they are actually going to be all about. Wearing masks, cooking, and binge watching. And this will actually be brought to us by none other than animation legend Eric Goldberg, in which he has collaborated with uh, M uh, McKim, another animation veteran, as well as a team of, uh, I believe they said, 10 different animators and 10 different people at Walt Disney Animation Studios, including uh, Mark uh, Mark Hen and R uh, Randy uh, Haycock. Yep, and yeah, it says here, animation veterans Mark Hen and Randy Haycock uh, also working on this. And, uh, oh, not, not just McKim, Dorothy McKim, thank you, uh, in which she is the... Yeah, in which she is the producer. And yes, of course, uh, there's also going to be a bit of voicing that uh, Bill Farmer is going to be back voicing Goofy while Corey Burton is going to be the narrator. So now we do have a little bit of a context of that. And uh, by the way, just to also add that uh, this was an idea from Eric Goldberg himself proposing the idea of Goofy uh, supplying some pandemic cartoons. Uh, and uh, apparently the team took about nine months in order to make these. So let's actually get familiar with these cartoons in particular. So reading from my source here uh, from D23, uh, the first one is going to be called How to Wear a Mask. In which it states here, uh, Goofy demonstrates the fine art of putting on a face, mac a face mask as he prepares to leave the house and venture into the outside world. Despite his earnest efforts, Goofy becomes inextricably tangled in the mask before finally fitting, uh, finding the perfect fit. Goofy is such a great physical character, said, uh, says Eric Goldberg. There are so many great physical cartoons that Goofy was in, like Olympic Champ, Goofy Gymnastics, and The Art of Self-Defense, where the narrator is describing all the things Goofy is supposed to do, but of course he can't. This, short's, uh, this short continues that tradition. Goofy having fun with it, we're not making fun of wearing masks, uh, Dorothy McKim notes. Uh, we can all relate to him, and we can all have a little chuckle about it. Uh, the next one is Learning to Cook, in which it states here, It is a recipe for comedy and disaster when Goofy uses everything but the kitchen sink, along with any and all ingredients in his understock pantry and refrigerator to concoct something original and uniquely Goofy. Goofy will always do something based on his own cra uh, cracked logic, says Eric Goldberg. After the, narr uh, the narrator explains that a master chef can make anything taste delicious using whatever they have on hand, Goofy is the embodiment. Uh, uh, Goofy is emboldened to do just that, even if it leads to a bizarro food tower. Goldberg says, um, "One of the great things about Goofy is that he always comes up smiling. It doesn't matter if he makes a completely ridiculous mistake. It's like, yes, I'm eating a piece of tin can with beans in it. Boy, it tastes great." So you can always count on the character to keep smiling no matter what. And finally, the final cartoon we got here is called Binge Watching, in which it states here, Goofy sticks his neck out to show viewers what it means to be a true uh, to be truly flexible when binge watching takes precedence over well just about everything. Goofy is remarkably able to multitask and juggle a variety of household activities simultaneously in a way that only Goofy can. By the time he sits down to watch his favorite show, his gaze is fixated on the screen. I thought it would be funny for Goofy to settle down with a slack-jawed expression and keep it there for the entire show, says, Goop, uh, says Go Goldberg. Uh, ta uh, talking about it with Mark, I said... Um, his bottom half acts like Goofy. You just got got to animate that part as if Goofy uh, as if it's Goofy, even though the top remains completely stationary. Uh, Clean up and background artist Rachel Bibb had had the most technically challenging job, says Goldberg, because there are all sorts of takeover to keep his head still and keep his body moving, uh, putting down the glass and putting pizza in his mouth. It was a uh, very technically oriented. And Rachel was great at keeping that straight. And with all these cartoons, uh, they are actually going to be coming very soon, in which uh, they will start being released on August 11th. So in a few weeks, actually. Uh, Jerry, 
I would like to know your thoughts on this since, um, yeah, like since nobody heard you before, um, what is your take with, um, what we got here with, uh, with Goofy's, uh, how to stay at home cartoons? Oh, yes, of course. Well, I, I, I do think it's, it is pretty intriguing to, you know, to see Goofy back in, back in the old, uh, in the classic style and just see, seeing how, like, seeing how he copes with something something pretty relevant like what what you're what you're discussing like what you what you said about yeah like you know with how to wear a mask cooking and binge watching it i think it would be pretty interesting especially since it's coming from eric goldberg of all people as well yeah absolutely and um you did mention a few people uh like related with this project or that you are familiar with. Uh, well, I already mentioned that we got Mark Han and Ray ha Randy Haycock, and I'm sure Disney and animation fans are familiar with them, but also we got producer uh, Dorothy McKim working on this as well. Uh -huh. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. You're familiar. Yeah. You're familiar with uh, what she's done so far. Yeah. She I think she produced uh, frozen. Did she? Yeah, like I think I think she or maybe that was Peter Del Fecho, but like but then again, like I think she I think she uh, or maybe she actually uh, co-produced uh, the Princess and the Frog. That could be. She, um, she definitely I think she def she did actually produce uh, the Prep and Landing shorts. Actually, mm -hmm. I do remember like seeing her name like uh, associated with that. Yeah, because it did mention on D23 that she is a part of, uh, she did work on Prep and Landing and Meet the Robinsons. But but if she did do like co-production stuff, like co-produce like with Frozen or anything like that, I would definitely believe you. Like she, considering that she's been at Disney for that long, then she probably did work on like other projects as well and have a prominent role on it too. And, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, and uh, by the way, for Spark Shorts, I don't know if people ha uh, people got your thoughts on that. Like, uh, what are your overall thoughts with uh, what we got so far with the uh, Spark Shorts with uh, Twenty Something with Nona and with the with the documentary feature? Well, uh, I I do, I do think they they have some pretty neat concepts. I, I like uh, Twenty Somethings. Uh, topic of like you know getting like uh grow like uh growing up and stuff and also nona how you're trying to how you want to focus on this one thing and then this other thing is kind of getting in the way of that like i t like I, I tend to deal with that plenty of times in my life like i most want to focus on one thing and then this other thing comes in like and it kind of gets in the way it gets in conflict and stuff so i can i can definitely relate <laughs> Yeah, and then we also got Nona. But one thing I will say for me that I feel very interested in is actually the documentary feature, uh, in which it is actually going to highlight those two animated shorts and the making of them, as well as the whole process of uh, Spark Shorts. Uh, do you, are, are you interested in that as well? Uh, Jerry, are you still there? Just want to double check. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in that too, of course. I got cut off again there, sorry. Yeah, like I'm definitely interested in the live action documentary as well. Like uh, that would be pretty intriguing to look at. <laughs> yeah, that. oh yeah, de definitely. Especially considering how with the Spark Shorts, they, they are showing Pixar's more experimental side and they are giving an opportunity for the animators there to to have their voice and it's not just the prominent people who would become directors and stuff like that having their time to shine on the movies but no it, it's honestly very intriguing to see what they got with um with spark shorts and uh with uh especially with a spark story that's definitely going to be one thing that I'll be keeping an eye on and considering we got all these announcements just out of curiosity do you have a personal preference of what you're excited for the most whether it be any of the spark shorts or with the uh, goofy cartoons with uh how to stay at home any any that you're excited for well like uh, I, like i think it would be both uh, uh it would be the spark short like 20 something and nona and like, but like, definitely the how to stay at home shorts. I definitely, I definitely like to check those out the most. But I'm, I'm def, I'm, 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 I'm almost just as open to seeing like uh, Nona and Twenty Something as well, and even the live action documentary. 
they all they, they all look very intriguing at the end of the day. I'll give them all the exact same kind of credits. <laughs> yeah, for me as well. I'm excited for everything, but for the most excited that I am for in particular, it would have to be for the Spark Short documentary because, well, I'm a cute like if if it's like and if it's a documentary about something related to animation, I would be so down for it. Uh, but also, I'm really interested to see the uh, goofy cartoons, how to stay at home, because it's not just, uh, you know, it's not just uh, D- Disney Animation's return to hand-drawn animation, but also um, these are Eric Goldberg cartoons making goofy shorts, which th- those are always a lot of fun to watch. So I'm definitely excited to see um, what Disney would have with them. And considering that's the one that's going to be coming the soonest uh, in a few weeks on April 11th. So I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for that one in particular. But yeah, with all the announcements, uh, they're, they're definitely something that I'm very much excited to see what they got. Yeah, correction. It was It's actually August 11th. What did I say? You said April. You said April there. August. Sorry. August. August eleventh. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I just I'm just I'm just going through so many things in a short amount of time. So, oh boy. Sorry yeah. about that, folks. Okay. Yeah. So it's on August eleventh. Oh, all right. It's all right. We all we all make mistakes with words. Oh, yeah, especially from a dysphasic from me. Uh, But yeah, anyways, um, so uh, if you want to go and mark your calendars on these, just remember uh, starting August 11th, that's when the uh, goofy shorts are going to be coming out. And as for the spark shorts, uh, they'll be coming out one week after another uh, for uh, for the spark shorts with um, 27, uh, 20 something coming out on September 10th. Uh, Nona coming out on September 20, uh, se- September 17th and a spark story coming out on September 24th. So for the remaining people who are still in the chat wall, I would like to know your thoughts on this. Now it's your turn to have the microphone And I would like to ask you all, how do you feel about the announcements of the Spark Shorts and with the uh, goofy cartoons of How to Stay at Home? Are you guys excited for this? Is there any in particular that you are the most hyped up for to watch? Let me know what you think. Uh, Let's see now. I absolutely adore the Spark Shorts, particularly both Boro and Loop, so uh, these will be a must-watch for me. As for the Goofy Shorts, they honestly feel a little bit late. Uh, they would have been perfect if uh, if they had been released last year, but then again, I love Goofy, so I'm not complaining. Maybe the binge-watching short will contain parodies of the Disney Plus series, uh, with one scene with Goofy saying something like, oh, yuck, th- oh, yuck, this is the way, or or even like, Gorsh, what is this what is, is pa- what is power line if not prince preserving oh my god that would be so true <laughs> like if you think about the binge watching episode there are plenty of opportunities where we're, we're just gonna see like goofy versions of like different kind of disney plus shows that that i want to see what they would have in mind oh yeah, that would be funny totally. uh, let's see now I'm very excited for these shorts. I'm expect I'm especially really excited for the upcoming Goofy shorts, especially considering it's such a long time since we've seen these kinds of shorts starring Goofy. Uh, these definitely could have been helpful during the lockdown last year, and it's great to see Disney returning to hand-drawn animation since the last time we really saw hand-drawn animation from Disney was with Mary Poppins Returns. Okay, so I do understand that there is that complaint that it has been, you know, like this should have been released last year or something like that but i would argue that now would technically be the perfect time for it because technically we are in the tail end of the pandemic or at least the tail end of the pandemic for those who are fully vaccinated and from there um like if it were released last year this would be a little bit taboo because that was back when like the pandemic was still a bit of a serious subject matter and it it would be a little bit you know it would be a little bit iffy and uh a, a little bit um insensitive if we would go and like tackle these subjects in a way that would be made to laugh and stuff like that. So I think now would be the best time mainly because like now we can have a moment to actually look back and just have a laugh, you know, just like, 
you know, just actually laugh at like the funny moments of the pandemic, like when we have to wear a mask or like all the binge watching we had to do or like even like the times when we have to cook. So I think honestly, I disagree with what you say in the chat wall. And I find like now is actually the best time because we are at the moment where we could just look back and have a laugh at what we've done during the pandemic. Uh, how do you feel, uh, Jerry, by the way, on this? Oh, um, yeah, like, uh, like, I, I would actually be on your side there. Like, uh, it, like, so, like, you know, like, what, like you said, it's about, you know, uh, looking back and just having a laugh and everything. <laughs> and I think I'm, I, it kind of reminds me of a joke in South Park where, like, apparently uh, this one episode where Cartman uh, wonders, like, how long does it take to, for AIDS to become funny? And like, and Kyle says, like, twenty two point three years. That's how, that's how long it takes for something tragic to become funny. <laughs> I remember that very well. Yeah, it, it, exactly. Like, usually there are a lot of these like tragic moments that happen, like even across history that. You know, sometimes they're terrible, but it, it would only be a matter of time that we could just look at it and just have a laugh, you know, like just laugh at the moments of like when we would have to endure these times. They could be t they could have been tough, but now we are at the moment where we could just look back at them and just think of them as memories, you know, like we're able to move on from this, especially when we have That's our vaccine. Lovely. We shall prevail, as they say. Exactly. By the way, are you fully vaccinated? Um, no, no, not no, not really. Really? Do like, you? I, I, I've yet to, I've yet to get my, I've yet to get my vaccine and stuff. Like, I'm, I am a bit, I, like, if it's okay to say this, but I'm, I am a bit cautious. I am a bit cautious about it because, like, I like my, I've had, I've had parents who've had me off vaccines for quite, for quite some time ever since. Ever since I had this uh, vaccination for like, for for like some uh, some allergic reaction I had, but when I was a wee when I was a wee lad when I was a wee in, like that's slang by the way for kids in Ireland. <laughs> well, I think we know yeah, like, we that that's a popular slang that we're familiar with. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, and also yeah, so like but the, yeah, like I'm still I'm still kind of like uh, kind of waiting on kind of waiting for the right moment you see to you know to get it to to get out but to get to get out there and get the vaccine but like I would I would normally keep it to myself really I don't want to go make a big scene about it you know because like mm -hmm. I'm more I'm a bit I'm a lot I'm pretty private about a lot of these things but you would still consider to actually get the vaccine right oh well of course well yeah yeah like I I, I would. I would, I would, but I'm just, it's just, I've just wait it out and see. All right. Well, I, I don't know how long do you need to wait it out, but worst case, I would like worst case, if you still feel that caution, like I would recommend you could talk to a doctor about it and talk about your experience with what you had with vaccinations in the past. And then you'll see like if, if this would be for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like totally, totally. Like it's a bit of a personal topic. Topic, really. I didn't think I would have to talk about this, but uh, like, but then again, like, it's all right. It's all right, anyways. Like, yeah. Like personally, you, you can carry on. yeah. Like in my opinion, like I personally do hope you do get the vaccination eventually. But um, if it is something that you still feel unsure, talk. You, you know, and especially if you had pa bad past experiences with vaccines, then really just talk to a doctor or talk to someone so that you can actually feel like some, something to make sure you can have your decision if you want to go and uh, be vaccinated. And hopefully you will. Also, another thing as well, I like I, I, didn't, I didn't want to say this, but I feel like I have to. Um, my unlike my parents, my mom and dad, they believe in all the QAnon conspiracy theory, like all that. All oh, that stupid crap. no. Oh, they believe no. in all that crap about the vaccine and the like, the whole cabal, like all all that stuff. Oh, it's just, I I kind of believed in it too, but then I sort of woke up to the how stupid it was, how, <laughs> just how crazy it like it really was at the end of the day. Oh God. So yeah, okay. Now I see your conundrum. Now I can. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's, that, like that's that's only that's another th that's just uh, that's just only adding to it. That that was there was also the past experience as a kid, like and like when I was just when I was mm -hmm. very young. You know, actually, I just thought about it. 
the way that you could approach trying to get a vaccination, what you can do is treat it like an animation job. Treat it like you just got a contract. You can't really say anything to anyone about it. Just get vaccinated. Just go on your way. You know, like just say, oh, I'm going to tell your parents, oh, I'm got, I am got to go out, you know, just need to go out, go out and get something. Then you just come back. And that's it. Don't have to say anything else. <laughs> Remember, it's a contract job. <laughs> that's how you should view getting okay. a vaccine. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, right. Okay. Th thanks for the recommendation. I'll, I'll, see, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. Oh, yeah. Just, just trying to help anyways, you Anyways, let's move on. Yes. Let's, let's uh, change the subject. Anyways, back on to Goofy and back on to the Spark Shorts. Uh, we did get a little sidetracked here. I'm sorry. Uh, Spark Shorts and a new Goofy cartoon sounds great. Uh, Goofy having pandemic-themed cartoons sounds fun, and I'm happy uh, it'll piss off anti-maskers. Well, I don't. Well, I mean, it's just announced. I don't know if 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 it has so yet. Unfortunately, we'll never get a Goofy cartoon on how to get get a vaccine. Well, speaking of which, <laughs> it might. Uh, it, uh, but yeah, uh, the Pixar Shorts sounds interesting, and I can't wait. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm pretty glad that Disney is going back to 2D animation after Winnie the Pooh. The new Goofy Shorts is something we haven't seen since How to Hook Up Your Home Theater. I might check them out when it comes out. Also, remember the stream crash with Bell, with the Bell trailer. This podcast so far, in my opinion, was so much fun and crazy. Yeah, again, I'm sorry about that, folks. I mean, that, that was all beyond my control. I wasn't expecting... A freaking power power outage to really mess up that stuff like oh my god it's just uh it can be difficult sometimes like with technical difficulties like this it's just it's not a good time to deal with that especially in the middle of it all anyways i'll read yeah, um like, no, go on yeah like uh, there, 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 i was just thinking there is like yeah, well, actually, you you can you can carry on the last question, then I can talk about like uh, what I was gonna say. All right. Anyways, I love Pixar. Uh, I love Pixar's Spark Shorts so much, uh, and I am glad that we are getting two more. Both Twenty Something and Nona seem pretty fun, and I love the former's art style. But really, I don't care about that right now. What I really care about is the fact that we are getting brand new goofy hand drawn shorts similar to his classic cartoons, which I love. All I want to say to Eric Goldberg and the rest of the animators is simply. Shut up and take my money. I don't care if it's free. Just take my money. Well, I mean, you still have to pay for Disney Plus. So technically, like you could just throw your money at Disney Plus. They'll be more than happy to take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, they, as you were saying. Yeah, of course. Um, there is actually there is actually the, the that spin up that uh, that follow up series of Princess and the Frog that they announced last year. Like I'm just I'm considering like. I'm just thinking maybe that could be an opportunity for Disney to make a fully hand-drawn animated uh, TV series in the style of the of the movie itself, sort of like what Warner Brothers and Netflix have done with Green Eggs and Ham, making a fully a, a full two D animation, uh, full two D animated uh, series out of that. Yes, that is true. That that is true. We're gonna get that Tiana series, and yeah, hopefully it will be hand drawn, and like that could give more Disney of an excuse to actually make uh, more of these hand drawn projects. If they're not gonna make a hand drawn animated feature, then why not just do some Disney Plus stuff? It would it, it gives them a better excuse to go and be more experimental. And yeah, I would yeah, and, and it would be great if Di if Disney Animation can also be as experimental as what Pixar is doing right now. With their spark shorts so if t if the tiana series can be more of an opportunity for them to go back and exercise their hand-drawn animation again then i would definitely be all for it all right so yeah, me oh. too. all right so i think we can do one more uh story i, I think we could get into the grand finale are you up for one more J uh, jerry Totally. Absolutely. Go on ahead. All right. So now we got one more project to talk about. One more story that we will get into. And oh boy, I did save the craziest one for last. It's a name that you thought that, oh, maybe you'll never get to hear again. You thought it was just a little fad and you could go and move on. But nope. Oh, it's coming back. It's coming back bigger than ever. And what I'm talking about is 
Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark. Yes, baby shark is gonna be back, and there's gonna be a lot more projects than ever. Nickelodeon has officially announced that not only is there gonna be a season two of the Baby Shark series, but they even announced a Baby Shark movie. Yes, folks, there will actually be a feature film based on Baby Shark. Now, I just want to go and clarify right now that there isn't a lot of information about this Baby Shark movie. It's only the fact that they're making a Baby Shark movie and that's it. In fact, to read you here from uh, my source here on Animation Magazine, it states... Uh, the as uh, uh, the as yet untitled movie will be co-produced by Nickelodeon Animation Studios and Smart Study, the global entertainment company behind the beloved children's brand Pink Fong. And uh, by the way, there is no other confirmation regarding if this is going to be released on the big screen, if this is going to be uh, made for television, like release on Nickelodeon, or if this is just going to be something like for Paramount Plus or Netflix or anything like that. But um, in terms of uh, the season two of the Baby Shark series that we do know a little bit more about, as it states, uh, just to read you a, a, a part here on Animation Magazine, it states, uh, the news of the movie comes as Nick orders a second season of its hit animated preschool series based on the global hit Pink Fong Baby Shark Baby Shark's Big Show, which was just nominated for a Daytime Emmy Award in the category of Outstanding Casting for a Daytime Animated Program, and currently ranks as the number two show with kids two to five for the second quarter of 2021 across all TV, only behind Paw Patrol. A Nickelodeon representative uh, came in to say, Baby Shark is, is an example of how we've been successful in bringing beloved properties that kids love from other platforms to Nickelodeon and opening up a whole new world of adventure. As home to the biggest franchises kids love, we're counting to uh, we're continuing to grow their their footprint by introducing brand new characters and storylines and creating original content in every format for fans everywhere. Season 2 of Baby Shark's Big Show, which is going to be 26 half-hour episodes, will... Oh, by the way, uh, fair warning, this will be a lot... This will contain a lot of cringy puns. Will be packed to the gills with off-the-hook adventures as and catchy songs as Baby Shark and William dive deep into the diverse underwater world of Carnivore Cove with their friends and family. They'll explore jaw-dropping new locations while making fresh friends and big waves, all in the sharky spirit of finclusivity. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was so... <laughs> oh my god. What? That's really funny. What is it, Jerry? They're teaching kids about finclusivity. <laughs> Aren't you... <laughs> are you not finclusive? <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes I find puns to be pretty funny. I don't know. <laughs> oh, so you actually enjoyed that one, did you? <laughs> I do. Uh, I do. So, yeah, that's... Especially when talking about it with others. Yeah, so that's pretty much what we know so far, is that there is going to be a season two of Baby Shark, as well as a Baby Shark movie. So, Jerry, what are your thoughts on all this? <laughs> Well, I'm um, I'm actually pretty familiar with the ping pong, uh, uh, the ping pong properties uh, uh, like Baby Shark and of course the wee uh, ping pong uh, fox character as well. Like I'm, I, I have checked out some of the stuff myself, and I'm like, it, it, it's pretty cute, and I do think uh, it is it is very uh, it is very respectful of uh, like of you know stuff like stuff aimed for children it's very respectful of this uh in terms of subject matter for children okay and yeah like and i do think it's pretty interesting how nickelodeon is like really diving into this franchise and collaborating with ping pong on not just a tv series but also a movie as well like it's it's, it's that's a bit it's quite crazy but at the same time i do wish them the very best of luck with it yeah i, I will admit like they're like for me, I feel both surprised and not surprised 
at the same time, mainly because of the fact that like Baby Shark is something we haven't heard in a long time, because you probably remember a couple of years ago, like back like before the pandemic, it was the trend that like just would never end. You hear Baby Shark everywhere like they were even playing it in movies. Like I remember when um, they played it during Angry Birds 2, like there was the one moment where I think it was um, Chuck that had to distract all the police, uh, all like the bodyguards and the police. And they were like they were all partying, they were all dancing and everybody it's dancing like baby shake do, 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 do. Then, baby shark yeah and then i remember and then i remember like afterwards when they had to go back to the lair and like it was almost going to screw up the plans of what the main characters had to do i remember all the police was just like going back and it was like back to work do, 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 do. back to work back do, 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 do. <laughs> Yeah, um, I actually did check out that a clip of that on YouTube uh, recently. I thought that was very funny. Yeah. Oh totally. yeah. Oh, it was a surprisingly it was a surprisingly funny movie. Like they really put they really did put up their game on that one. Oh uh, yeah, but it, it it's kind of surprising. But anyways, going back to uh, Baby Shark. The, the thing is, is that, yeah, it is kind of surprising that you would hear that, yeah, Baby Shark is coming back and now bigger than ever with the fact that it's getting another movie. But then again, um, with the ratings that they have revealed uh, regarding how the original Baby Shark series did, I think it really goes to show that it is still bigger than ever, uh, especially towards its target audience, because you got to keep in mind that when it comes to Baby Shark, it is always aimed for children like it's always aimed for that audience in particular so you could so it's not hard to imagine that yeah those little kids like even if they enjoyed baby shark like two three years ago they'll still enjoy it today especially with the baby shark series that they would grow into this massive world to add like several characters that it's not just that shark family but they would also add like a whole other group of characters like the little goldfish or that pretty little fish or even like the sea donkey over here that they would add all these new characters in order to really spice things up with the world of baby shark and now that they're even including a movie and i'm just gonna say this right now even though we don't have any confirmations it would not surprise me if this would actually come out on the big screen especially like in in, in like next month we are going to have the Paw Patrol movie that technically is going to be coming out on the big screen. So I, I can imagine that if that Paw Patrol movie becomes a major hit, like if it ends up becoming profitable for Paramount, then they'll probably do the same thing with Baby Shark, where Baby Shark will be having its own movie, but on the big screen. If not, then it'll just be either like a made for TV movie or they'll just do it for Paramount+. Plus. Yeah, like I, I, I'm, and to be honest, I'm, I, like, I'm pretty interested in checking out that uh, Paw Patrol movie. I do think it, it'd, be, it'd look pretty cute, and I do like how they really updated the animation style of the original series and made it look, made it really look like a, like a feature film. Like really updated, really updating the all, like the look of it, the textures and everything, like the, like kind of the fur textures and the, like the, the clothing and stuff. I do think it, it's pretty neat. Yeah, it's like it, 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 it's like they are aware that it is a movie made for the big screen. So they so at least the animation does treat it that way. And it is a nice thing that we are seeing so far with what they're delivering on the trailers. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> funny enough, though, it's directed by the same guy who directed Escape from Planet Earth. Funny enough. <laughs> yeah, well, he directed what we ended up having. He's not the one that ended up causing all the godforsaken trouble that that yeah, occurred. Like, at the end of the day, he's not he's not the one responsible. But at, at, at least, like he just wanted a movie to work on, and he and he 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 and his friend Bob Barden came on just to complete that film. You no, know, like how like to like just try to try and like re redeem all the problems that that movie had throughout the throughout its production. They were probably the best things to happen to that movie because they were just like they were just there to do their job. They were like, OK, let's just finish this and then move on, because everything about it was an absolute disaster. <laughs> yeah, I remember it very well. So, yeah, oh, my God. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, do you like 
do you think the Baby Shark movie will be released on the big screen or do you think it's just going to be like a smaller thing that will be on Paramount Plus or Nickelodeon? Well, I think it, I think it could be like the Paw Patrol movie where it would be actually out on the big screen and on Paramount Plus at the same time, like in the US. Really? Like, yeah, it's actually like in your country and Canada, it's like uh, Elevation Pictures is distributing it with Paramount there. While in the US, it's going to be it's going to be released by, uh, onto into theaters and on Paramount Plus at the same mm-hmm. time. I think it's going to be August 30th that it'll be out in the US, while here in the here in Ireland and the UK, we're going to be getting it on August 12th, uh, mm. on a, like on a, on a Wednesday or a Friday in August, uh, like around the second week. Really? Um, actually, just to, go yeah, incorre- well, just to go incorrect, I think it is August 20th that it'll be coming out in North America, not the 30th. Um, but the fact oh, that you're right. the fact that you're getting it earlier, honestly, I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so, but yeah, j- b- by the way, just out of curiosity, did you actually see some of the episodes of uh, the Baby Shark series? Well, um, well, I, I, I just kind of, I just kind of started uh, check checking out clips of it recently. Like that's like I'm only, I'm only, I'm only starting really. I'm only starting to check it out. Uh, that's all. But uh, uh, from what I saw, it do- it does look pretty. It does look pretty pretty enjoyable. It's and it's like it's just uh, you know it's that it's that innocent and innocent and like uh, lighthearted and yeah and quite um, and quite enjoyable and, and quite enjoyable uh, uh, kid series. So it's kind of like uh, it's kind of up there with uh, uh, Bluey, uh, like Disney Plus Disney uh, Junior's Bluey, and also um, kind of up there as well with um, uh, Ardman's Timmy Time. If you remember that. Yeah, I, I do recall Timmy time. Yes. OK, OK, that's that, that that's nice. And yeah, it is true, because at the end of the day, it is made for children. And of course, it will have like that nice, lighthearted tone to it. And ultimately, it is for them. And if they still enjoy Baby Shark, then honestly, let them have their baby shark. And the fact that they are getting more, it is nice to see that it is becoming more and more of a bigger success that it is growing beyond just the song itself. Like, you know, like it's not, it's not just, you know, it's not just continuously repeating the same thing that we have been hearing over and over and over again, just before the pandemic. It is something that it is much more than that. And it's it's honestly fascinating to see like what started out as this little that this little song on the internet now is becoming like the, the this really big thing that it really is becoming like its own major world that like it has all these different characters all these different storylines happening that like it is you know like baby shark in a way is kind of an impressive major success story like i know it's yeah, weird to say people. that about baby shark out of all things but there <laughs> but still man it, it, there there is something to admire about seeing the rise and how like the baby shark fame really did evolve you know it's it's something admirable and the fact that it is still big to this day and i think it really shows and hopefully yeah honestly i'm i'm on the same page of, as you i wish the best of luck for the people making both the series and the movie to help baby shark keep on growing how it is right now because this is the kind of success that people are definitely looking for yeah totally all right so with that said i would like to go into the chat wall and i would like to go and ask you all how do you feel about the news about Baby Shark, the fact that we're getting a Baby Shark movie and a second season of Baby Shark. Are you guys, uh, if you guys have seen the series, are you interested to see more of it? Um, or how do you feel about the idea that we're getting a Baby Shark movie in general? Let me know what you all think about this. Okay. Uh, this series and upcoming movie can be enjoyable for toddlers and preschoolers, but it's definitely not my cup of tea. I will frankly skip that one and I will focus more on uh, future Light Chaser Animation's White Ch- uh, White Snake sequel. Yeah, that, yeah, I think that was that was another thing that they actually just announced, actually, that there is going to be a new uh, 
uh, a new white snake, and which is going to be called a uh, green snake, actually. Uh, well, actually, just uh, here, just to quickly go and share it here, because uh, I actually got the information. Like, it was just on the side of this article on uh, Animation Magazine, but... Yeah, I believe... Yeah, there it is. Yeah, White Snake 2, The Tribulation of Green Snake, which right now is dominating in uh, at the Chinese box office. Like, it's really going big, so... Yeah, that's another thing uh, that I guess people can look forward to. Now, have you seen... Uh, by the way, have you seen um, uh, White Snake, by the way, uh, Jer uh, Jerry? Oh, um, uh, not really. Not really. I've just heard about it, but I just know. Ah. But yeah, I'm checking out. Uh, I'm checking out the article here on the video. It, it does look. Uh, it does look pretty pretty neat. Like the Green Snake uh, now sheds box office competition and stuff. That does. That, that does look pretty neat. Like, and I, I'd be interested in checking it out when they bring it bring it to the West. Yeah, well, you can watch uh, White Snake right now, and I will say the animation is very much impressive. So, like, start by watching White Snake first, and I heard a lot of great things about White Snake, by the way. Uh, and then we'll see how things go with the sequel. But so far, uh, the Chinese people are really loving it. <laughs> uh, let's see now what else we have. Uh, well, I'm not really into Baby Shark. I am curious to see what this movie will be like, and I would imagine it'll be a movie made just for kids. And that's that I can't imagine it'll have much more to offer. Uh, and as for the finclusivity pun, it's still not as terrible as peepsonality or that uh, Princeton joke from a Cinderella story. I probably won't be watching this movie or the new season, but we'll just have to wait and see on this. But uh, we can at least hope that it doesn't turn out to be another Wonder Park. Nah, I think even Baby Shark has higher standards than Wonder Park. <laughs> Like, Wonder Park doesn't even have its show. Like, they, they were trying to promote it, but that ain't happening anytime soon. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's see now. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, someone someone's just screaming, More Baby Shark? Seriously? I've never really watched the series and never will. And if you don't really know, I heard uh, Kimiko Glenn voice Baby Shark and some recognizable actors voicing various characters, even though, yeah, the song is catchy, but there are some times when it's already too much to hear when everything else uh, is is around, including YouTube. I'm not really into the series and never got any interest. Plus, I'm an adult, so I'll take that as a pass. So no thank you. So yeah, and that is true. There are some recognizable names, by the way. Uh, some people might recall there is... Um, well, th there are a few that maybe some might have heard, like uh, Luke Youngblood. Um, there is uh, Natasha Rothwell. There is Eric uh, Edelstein. There is Deborah Wilson. And, uh, oh yeah, there is Patrick Warburton playing as Grandpa Shark. That's probably the biggest surprise here. They got Patrick, Warper Patrick Warburton playing Grandpa Shark at this. And now this. Yeah. And now I really want to hear a Patrick Warburton version of Baby Shark. I mean, like, now that he is officially Grandpa Shark, I want to hear him actually do... The, I, I want to hear him actually sing the Baby Shark song. I think I think that, like, even, even like, the most... Even people who hate the Baby Shark song would want to hear the Patrick Warburton version. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Baby Shark. Baby Shark. Peter, have you ever heard of Baby Shark? Have uh, you ever heard of Baby Shark? All right. You know, like, TV, show, TV show for kids on Nickelodeon. All right. Anyways, uh, one more comment before we go. Well, this is a thing that will exist. Considering the massive phenomenon that Baby Shark has become, it does not surprise me that Baby Shark is getting a movie. Also, it really is interesting that Nickelodeon is making more movies based on their preschool shows like the upcoming Paw Patrol movie, the Baby Shark movie, and they even announced we are getting a Blue's Clues and You movie. Oh, that is true. I almost forgot about that. There is going to be that that Blue's Clues movie. Uh, yeah, I do, I do remember Blue's Clues. Uh, I remember watching some a bit of it as a kid, and also kind of checking out some books of it when I was when I was uh, at uh, when I was in school, when I was in like preschool and stuff or kindergarten and stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, but with that said. We are finally at the point where we can conclude this episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. And oh man, I did not expect that power outage to make things go truly crazy on this. But 
Jerry, I just got to say thank you so much for joining me on this. And thank you so much for your patience on this. You have truly been a real great sport on this. Like, I cannot thank you uh, enough. And, and thank you for taking... Yeah, like totally. You're very welcome. And thank you for the opportunity of taking me on. I was not expecting this at all. <laughs> it's just it's, like I've, I've been following you for for the past like nearly nearly a decade now. And I've been really enjoying your videos like since like since I was since I started uh, high school. And like and you and like it was you're, you're one of the you're one of the reasons why I'm so into animation now. And it's such a pleasure to have been chatting with you now. Thank you so much, man. And uh, by the way, if there if there's any place that people can can follow you on social media, would you want to share that, or um, uh, is there anything at all that you you would you would want if people are interested in uh, following you, of course? Yeah, like uh, I I do have a Twitter, of course. Um, pe people can follow me on on my Twitter uh, at, at, Jer uh, at Jerry um, underscore A A B. All right, that's. Like I, I do have a story there. Yeah, I'll put it. Yeah, I'll get. You can send me a link later, so I could also put it in the in the description on YouTube. But with yeah, all. I actually oh, did. Uh, oh, oh, okay, perfect, perfect. So we can have that settled. So with all that said, people, I would just like to say thank you all so much for watching, and thank you all so much for listening. And hopefully next week we won't be facing any technical difficulties like this whatsoever, and we can have things back to normal, or at least the mo the most normal that this pos uh, this podcast can be. So with all that said and done, I would like to say thank you all so much for joining me, and until next time, see you later, dudes. Right, bye.